this week, our Explorer's Way adventure continues. Katie leaves us for a trip of a lifetime across Lake Eyre and the mystery of Mari Man. We find roads closed due to flooding, perfect for sailing. We share the real costs of outback travelling. We lose yet another drone. We don't know where the drone is. The whole credit goes to mum. Before shaking our way across the Udna Dada. We never know why it's called the Udna Dada track. Plus, one down, three to go. We pick up this week's adventure from the remote outback town of Marie. It's a bucket list experience, isn't it, Katie? It is. How are you yes. feeling? Good. Nervous. Yeah, yeah okay. Excited, I'll... nervous. Jasper and I feel nervous for you too. Yeah. Uh, especially seeing that your weigh-in for this experience was <laughs> in a pub. Yeah, oh my goodness. I know. How unique is that? I love that. Went in the outback. Uh, <laughs> yes. Oh, no. Where are we running? Holy crackers, that's after dinner as well. <laughs> Thank you. Are you ready? No, but yes. Never been on the scales before in the middle of the bar, but hey, they could have weighed me before dinner. The food was fantastic. The company was great, especially getting to meet some fellow travellers. Mm. Jane and Greg and their friends as well joined us. And of course, Loretta and Anthony, our travelling companions. It was a really great experience. What are you doing? Okay, I'm going up on a scenic flight with Avidair. They operate out of Mari here. And it's a two hour uh, flight, which is amazing. And we're gonna go right up to the very top of wow. Lake Eyre. I'm so excited about that. We've been tipped off that the, the flood waters from all the rain that's been taking place out here. Amazing. Are flowing into the lake. So I think we'll get some pretty beautiful uh, sights and hopefully some awesome footage. I'm cameraman today, so that's a bit of extra pressure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, and you're leading us behind and that's not really for any other reason as, uh, well, mm. one, there was no more room on the plane and mm. two, 595 bucks. Yes, but for a two hour flight, you know, I didn't think that was too bad, really, when you, when you, oh, I think you're right. You're going to get, and oh. it is a bucket list. So I've yeah. wanted to do it forever. I've wanted to see Lake Air forever. It's, it's a good point. I think we talk about, you know, having those one or two items. If you're doing a lap or you're taking a gap year mm. or just each of you pick one thing that you want to do. Mum was yeah. swim with the whale sharks. And we got there in October and there were none there. We'll get there. We'll get yeah. there. I promise. <laughs> yeah. And also check the dates of these things. But this is mm. the year to see Lake Eyre. Yeah, Everyone is okay. just saying this is this is one of those once in a lifetime experiences. But it's, yeah. I think, a once in 10 year event. So we're going to miss you. I'll miss you guys too. I How love you. I love you. I'm feeling a little bit sad back yes. there, mate. We'll go check out town. You get yourself or ready warmed up yeah, for your flight some stretches and stuff um i've been to the bathroom about 50 times just to make sure that i don't need to go when I i'm up in the air your heart rate going <laughs> this is babe it's all good all right no it is it's awesome you got to also drop the tire pressures don't forget pump down the bay yeah, pump down the bay yeah. pump down the bay yeah, exactly all right we'll do it jasper yeah all right awesome wish Have me fun. luck see ya love you
One of the most remote places in Australia, Lake Eyre stretches over 200 kilometres long and 77 kilometres wide and is the country's largest salt lake. Lake Eyre floods when water from outback rains as far north as Mount Isa follow the networks of channels and streams into the basin. This rare event occurs approximately every four years, however the lake has only filled entirely three times in the last 160 years. It was incredible to see the contrast of water and white salt pans that look like glaciers as you were flying over them. And getting to fly so low at 500 feet over the lake was an absolute thrill. An added bonus of flying with Arid Air from Mari is the opportunity to see the mysterious Mari Man. This incredible four kilometre long carving is etched deep into the red outback earth. It was first discovered in 1998, but no one really knows who created it or why. Although the locals all have their theories. So we just thought we'd stop and have a look at this because it's uh, really some great information. You can see that the Birdsfield track is closed. In fact, everyone at the pub, Jasper, last night said that, the locals that is, that it's going to be closed right through to the start of May and um, po potentially beyond that. There's been that much rain out there that not only is it impassable, but they're really trying to protect the track as well and not just chop it up by just everyone just trying to give it a go and inevitably probably getting stuck anyway and needing a rescue. So these road signs are super important to really take notice of. And something cool that we haven't seen is this one here. It's Scan for Road Conditions Report and that takes you straight to the website with all of the conditions, the colour coding so that you know whether it's safe to go before you even get here. So really great advice to get on and check those conditions and then you know well in advance what you're in for. Okay, what's going on mate? Now, Jasper and I were just driving past on our way back to the van park and uh, which is behind the pub and we saw this sign, it says Lake Air Yacht Club. Yes, you heard me right, look at that. Let's go find out what this is about, hey Jasper? Okay. Lake Air Yacht Club, that's interesting. Uh, Pleased to meet you, Bob. You're the Commodore of the Lake Air Yacht Club. What's the story here? Well, the Yacht Club's been going for 24 years now. We what? sail out here in the desert, basically. And you genuinely sail? Look at the pictures. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We have over 300 members in the club. Wow. There's been a bit of rain up north, so uh, I'm starting to plan a regatta for in July. And people come from all over Australia to go sailing here. Wow. Never, ever heard of this. Uh, heard of this, uh, Mate, I'll I'm, I'm tell you what, I, I know I've been... You get a lot of media publicity. Live, ...living under a rock I have, but that is yeah. fantastic. And how many people will you get to your regatta? It, it will be over 100. Amazing. And do people then bring their own 
Yep. Most people bring their own boats. We've, yep. got, we've got 10 boats down here underneath, okay. um, including Dick Smith, our rear admiral. He's got a boat here. Oh, is it? Our doctor's got a boat here. Um, she's remote area qualified, very useful. Okay. Yeah, you know, definitely. A good friend to have. Every regatta she's stitched up a few people. <laughs> well, that is awesome. We have our most popular adventure boat is a caper cat. There's four of them under here. And there's two surf cats. Like, I live in Victoria when I'm not here. Okay. And I just found another surf cat for 40 bucks. So, oh. and, and it looks in good nick. I'm just working out how I can get it. Yeah. So I won't be back in Melbourne till mid-May. Well, that's right. It's 40 bucks for the boat, and then it's yeah, going to cost run, you a full grand to get it. And I forgot that his four-wheel drives out of action at the moment. And that's <laughs> the only tow bar he's got. So. so from Victoria, what part of Victoria are you trying to get I help? I live in Belgrave, in there. Belgrave. The boats in Somerville. There you go. All right. So for all our viewers out there on Channel 31, if you're anywhere around Belgrave, you want to help out Bob? Well, it's actually in Somerville. <laughs> it's in Somerville. Okay, there you go. We need, we need a hand to get the boat here. That's the good. trouble is we're running out of room. Yeah, I yeah. Meet us just jam with boats. Oh well, we're gonna we're gonna go check it out, but I've got to look at some of these photos first because oh, I don't know what I was thinking. I've never really they, attributed Lake Eyre yeah. to yachts. So these are these are photos from our regattas. Uh, this is 2010 and 2012. We had big regattas in 10, 11, 12, and 13. Okay. We had a medium sized regatta in 16, 2016. Yeah. Um, a small one in 2019. So this is potentially a big one. Well, we've got this much rain and so much water coming in yeah, well, to the mate, catchment. Up, up there they had 175 mil of rain, which is uh, you know, like more than your annual rainfall just in one event a week ago. Wow, remarkable. Yeah. Wow. Brilliant. Pleasure yeah. to meet you, Bob. Okay. Yep. Commodore Bob, thank yep. you, mate. Yep. I live in Melbourne. Vice Commodore lives near Margaret River, a place called Dunsborough. Okay, yep. Like people from everywhere, there's a there's a map of um, that's where our members are around the country, like all over the place. There's, okay. There's two types. That one's probably the one with the best story. Right, that's the one we want then. Yeah. Okay. okay, thanks very much. Thank you, mate. Okay. We've actually got plenty of fuel, but. Seeing that we're going to be out on the track over the next week, I actually believe I'll have enough fuel to get us well and truly through to Cooper Pedy, uh, you know, 650, 700 kilometres with that 187 litre tank I've got there. And we've also got the spare jerry can that's um, currently got 10 litres in it, but can hold 20. Now, good idea though, we think is, particularly if you're in remote places, once you get to half a tank, fill up. <laughs> you know don't leave it we've made that mistake once we won't make it again uh, but just to give you an idea of the fuel price here in Maree, it is two dollars ninety cents per litre so it's starting to get up there i gave my prediction of well over three dollars what did mum say uh she said ten dollars <laughs> <No. laughs> we'll have to ask her to remind us all right this is the oasis cafe and caravan park we'll get some fuel and get on the road Oh well, part of the deal. Okay, look at this, mate. Get your tyres here, you can do your post here. They've got accommodation, there's a caravan park, cafe. Let's head in. There's a bakery. Bakery, yeah, mate. Yeah. Go and check oh, this place out. Cool. Let's get an idea of some prices, shall we? All right, cornflakes, $8.50. There you go, give you an idea. What about Vegemite for a, just a little thing of Vegemite? $6.80, let us know what you think. Here you go, mate, you love your tuna. How much is tuna? What does that say? Uh, $3.20. $3.20. Mum gave us a list, mate. We had bread, mushrooms, I think they were 20 something dollars. Uh, some apples. Here you go. There is uh, 250 grams of cheese for $10.50. Yes, chubba chub for 80 cents. Best value item in the store. Now listen, I'm not complaining about outback prices. We talk about this all the time. Are they absolutely inflated? Yes. Is there additional cost for transport and logistics to get this stuff here and especially fresh produce? Absolutely there is. But just be prepared for that. Like at the end of the day, it is what it is and, and you can't really do much about it except 
bring a lot of it with you. But look, by the time we get to Cooper Pedy, there's a bit of a bigger shop there with all you need. So the price will be a little bit uh, less than it is out here, that's for sure. Well, that's what I'm expecting. But there you go. They're, um, it's up there, isn't it? But it's all up there anyway, even when you're back on the East Coast. Price of groceries is crazy. What do you think as a seven-year-old? Mm, a lot. Yeah? A lot of prices yeah. change. Especially in uh, when you get up to Uluru. It's yeah. like, I don't know, $3 per litre for fuel. Right, okay. How much are Chubba Chups in Uluru? I don't know. We'll find out. <laughs> right, Putting now. money in for the Royal Flying Doctor service. Yep, there you Can go. Can I reach? No. But you got to stand up on the chair, mate. Oh. There you go. Hiya. Boom. There you go. Wish him luck. So there's the showers. There we go. And we've got a pool down here somewhere, Jasper. Well, that's a bit of a bonus. Look, if you're a customer of the pub, then you camp for free, which we always think is just such an awesome deal. You know, support the local community. Get a free night's camp, good pub meal, good conversations, good characters. But then, this is an absolute bonus. I can tell you what, there's not many pools in the outback that look like this, Jasper. No. And we're the only ones here. <laughs> Woo! A private swimming oasis. <laughs> okay, now, Jasper used the word cool. Fish. <laughs> I'd use the word Cold. <laughs> Mate, I'm in, you're not. Come yeah, on. I'm in. Yeah, barely. Well, you're barely in. Refreshing. That'd be a better choice, wouldn't it? Okay, the start of the Udna Dada. What's the matter? Look, it's 630 odd kilometres if you were to do the, the entire stretch from here in Mari to Mala at the end there right before the uh, Northern Territory border and South Australian border. Uh, we're gonna be taking probably a good week to do this. So we're not in any rush. I've just been putting the tire pressures down with the uh, I check tire pressure deflators uh, down to 25 PSI cold. Uh, look, really the advice from the four wheel drive instructor, Tony Davies, who we did our tag along to the Cape, is that you wanna remain under 30 PSI once the tires have warmed up to prevent any punctures or any damage that may occur from you know sharp jagged rocks that are sticking out that's probably the best advice that we've heard because in his 85 trips or whatever it is now i believe he's had one puncture so and that's with all of the tag along vehicles so some great advice from an expert uh, so we've just finished the front vehicle we're now going to go to the van so hopefully that helps that's what we do for our rig obviously do your own research but there's some good advice for you Okay, slight problem, Jasper. What happened? We don't know where the drone is. Well, we found well, the, the coordinates. last coordinates. We found the last coordinates. Oh my gosh. Okay, so we put the drone up. Everything was good. And then this must be, because I only fly the drone at 120 meters, but there must be quite a lot of wind there because as it was coming back in, it said, oh, your battery level's getting lower. And it went low very, very quickly. Get us over that way. And we're only, I'll go. We're only 300 meters from it. All right, there we go. Now, 
This is a good Starlink promo, isn't it, really? <laughs> Look at that. We've got Starlink up. Just plugged it in to the back of the 79. Katie punched in the coordinates because it lost signal to the drone. So find my drone wasn't an option if you're thinking, well, why don't you just use find my drone? Because of wherever it landed and because of where we were, it lost signal with the remote controller. All right. Okay. So Katie... Here's the smart one in the family. She's also now worked out 280 metres. You are kidding. <laughs> yes, baby! <laughs> oh, there you go. 280 metres. How good is that? Tell you what, she is a smart cookie, that Katie. Bloody ripper. Woo! All right, give these people a wave. <laughs> Holy crackers. I still don't know how. Oh, I don't know. There you go. I don't know. Anyway, I'm stoked. I'm so happy. <laughs> Unbelievable. Da, 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 da. Look at this, Jasper. We did it. It's coming home, baby. Oh. Yeah. You are one smart <laughs> cookie. Yeah. You're a legend. Woo. You're pretty good too, mate. Thank you. Bloody legends. Wow. Reunited and it feels so good. Holy. Yeah. How freaking awesome is Starlink? Like, honestly. That is amazing that we could just do that. <laughs> yeah! Starlink, perfect internet. It can also find your drones. <laughs> copy, Mr. First Aid, you got me. Uh, copy, Mr. Jasper. We found the drone. Dad found it. Well, actually, he, w he was the one who had to walk out and get it. But Mum, Mum thought... Let's get the Starlink dish out and just like put the coordinates in. That's amazing, awesome for finding the drone, hey? Yeah, I think the whole credit goes to Mum. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I definitely think so. You just need a yes wifey button now. Good idea, get the Starlink out and see the coordinates in. One down, three to go. Congratulations, Desmond from New Zealand for picking up our first copy of the Explorer's Way guidebook. Okay, for this week, to be in the draw, all you need to do is give us a like and leave a comment. Let us know what is your number one bucket list experience around Australia. We've got three more copies up for grabs. Thanks for watching. Please do like, subscribe and share our channel. And if you'd like more information on full-time RV travel and living, visit our website, thefeelgoodfamily.com. There you'll find loads of free resources, our weekly podcast, caravan cooking recipes, our monthly magazine articles and much more. We look forward to seeing you next week. Take care of yourself and your family and happy trails.
me.